We are still top of the league. We have a three-point gap at the top, and we are taking on third-place Erdingen in one of our matches today. This title race is going down to the wire. Let's see what happens today. Welcome back then guys to the Red Devil Revival now here for episode 10 of our series and to what is the second to last one of our first season here with Kaiserslautern and I mean I say second to last it could well have an extra one if we end up going to the playoffs but it's definitely the second to last episode in terms of our regular league action. As I've just said in the intro we are still top of the league we have a three point gap now up there and there is four games remaining of which we have some very tough games which are coming up in today's episode. Now, before we do get going, guys, if you missed the previous one, when we took on Duisburg and Saarbrücken in two vital matches, the link will be right above me for you to click on so you can go back and watch that episode, see quite what went on when we faced those two sides in a replay of an earlier episode that we had in the season as well. And also, guys, before we do start off today, if you do enjoy the video here, please do chuck a like down on it. It always helps the channel out. And of course, if you're looking forward to seeing any more of my content, such as any FM21 experiments, of which my latest one, my 500 years later in Football Manager, would have gone live earlier today or in the week. The link should be right above me for you to click on or any of my FM21 tactics videos. Then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. Now then guys though, let's get into this episode properly here. In between the last episode and this one, we only played the one game. If we go into our schedule, I'll show you quite what went on. Of course, previously, as I've already said, we played Saarbrücken and Duisburg. We had two decent results, a win and a draw. And then we took on Unterhacking, who are a mid-table side in the off period between the last episode and this one. And we just about won it 1-0. We scored from a Marlon a little goal. I think it was a free kick, if I remember rightly. I can't quite recall it. It was a very tight and nervy game. The players looked a little bit nervous, to be totally honest. And they did struggle to break into hacking down. But in the end, we got the goal that mattered and we ended up winning it 1-0. Following on from that, of course, in the league, we are still sitting there in first place. We are three points clear of Dresden, who are in second, four clear of Erdingen, who we take on in today's episode. That is the second game of the episode here today. The first one is up against 1860 Munich, who are down there in 11th place. It's a bit of a tough match. They're a mid-table side, a side who really are struggling in comparison to where they should be. So even though they are down the bottom half of the table, we cannot take them lightly. In terms of how we're lining up for it, if we go into our team selection for this upcoming game, it's essentially as full strength as the team can be. It's Krapikasi in there, Kevin Kraus, Carlo Sickinger and Kobold as the back three. Mono is our right back with Hercher at left back. It's then Enzo Zidane and Schmieder back as the two midfielders. At the moment we're having to play Schmieder back because Tim Reader, our normal ball winning midfielder, is currently out suspended. He's picked up too many yellow cards. So Schmieder back comes in as a straight replacement. It's then Johnny Williams and Ritter as the attacking midfielders. And then Pori is back up front as the lone striker. I did play Rursa in the previous match, but he did absolutely nothing, so Pori is coming in as a result. That's how we're going to line up for this first game here, away at 1860 Munich. Let's get into the game and hopefully get a good result. I will take a draw, I will be totally honest. A win is very much vital though, but a draw isn't the end of the world. I think when we played 1860 Munich at home, we may well have lost to them earlier in the season. I cannot quite remember off the top of my head, but as I say, a draw away isn't too bad. I'm going to say we should be winning this one fairly comfortably because the pre-match odds have us as the favourites for it. I'll say to the rest of them, I have faith in you to go out there and get the job done. And everyone, to be fair, is looking very, very good. Let's though get the match kicked off. And of course, here we are. We are away at 1860. I don't know if we're at the Allianz. I presume 1860 don't share the Allianz stadium anymore. It doesn't look like it anyway. But of course, we are here away in our red kit. I say, I take a draw. I don't know. I don't know, though. I don't know. Is a draw a good result? Probably not when you look at the fact we're top of the league. We should be winning it. So I guess I guess I won't take a draw. I guess we'll only take three points. But I mean, oh, God, I thought we could see it really early then. 
Thankfully, Molders there, I think Sasha Molders, who I'm pretty sure when you played 1860 last time, did score against us. He's very, very good in the air, and he just clipped the bar there from that early effort. Another chance here, though. Moray here on the right-hand side. He whips the ball into Hirsch at the far post, and Philip Hirsch gets us off to a great start. Seven and a half minutes played, and we are 1-0 up. Come on. Fantastic cross in there from Moray, the right-back. And it goes to the opposite flank with our left back in Hercher, who then heads it into that far right hand corner. Very, very good stuff. Really good goal. Because in the fact he was never my first choice left back was Hercher. He's done a fantastic job since he's had to come in for Hushek. And to be fair, even now Hushek is back fit, I'm still keeping Hercher in the team. I don't really feel it's fair for us to drop him. I've just spotted, by the way, Dresden are winning their game. But I'm pretty sure I saw that Erdingen are losing currently. Which, if that stays as it is, could be absolutely massive. Because if Erdingen... Oh, hang on. Ritter to make it 2. It is 2-0. Come on, Marlon Ritter. The man's on fire. He's 11 for the season. And he's just had a fantastic season overall. And as we were saying about Erdingen, you can see down the bottom left here, they have just equalised. That could be a massive goal. Because should we win and Erdingen drop points, we will be at least six points clear of them going into the upcoming match where we face them in our next game. So if things stay as they are, things will be looking really good. You can see the lead table here. We are currently six points clear of them should results stay as they are. Of course, if Erdingen score, it will go back to being a four-point gap. And then should we then drop points against Erdingen in the following match, things could be a little bit nervy going into those final games of the season. But at the moment, we are looking fantastic. We've only had three shots on target, scored two, XG of only 0.43, but I do not care. We are playing phenomenally well. We are tuning up, which is the main thing. I'm going to say you play well, but there's still room for improvement. Uh, none of the players were really that fast. So I'm going to say to defenders, there's a lot more to come from you. Say the same to the midfielders. I'm going to say to Paul Rudeau, I'm disappointed with him because he's done absolutely bugger all in this game. Because of course he has, because whenever he's on screen, he often goes a little bit quiet. But hopefully he can sort himself out in the second half. I've just seen, by the way, with Dresden, they're winning 2-0 after having two penalties. And I'm pretty sure that's Chris Lerver, who I may be mistaken here, but I'm pretty sure he's a former Kaiserslautern player. He was previously at Huddersfield when Huddersfield were in the Prem. Now, though, we've got a knock to Johnny Williams, so I'm going to sub him off. I'll swap Enzo and himself around, and we'll then get Shifshi on in the, as the DLP. And I'm also going to sub off Moray for Francis. Just make no straight swaps. And then we'll go with the last 25 minutes hit and hopefully see the rest of this game out. If we can just get a comfortable win, first of all, that will definitely kind of improve my feelings about these matches today. I was a little bit nervy, but hang on, Pori, to make it 3-0. He's gone for it nice and easy. 3-0 up. That should really sit me game over. Pori's 18th for the season. I don't know really what to do with Pori, by the way, because he's on loan at the moment and we have an option to buy him. But should we go up... I don't know if it's just worth not bothering signing him and then looking to bring someone else in because I think the fee that the club who loaned him to us want about 200 grand, which is quite a lot when there's often a lot of better free transfers. So I think I've already talked myself out of it anyway. I have also spotted before this. I don't know, we'll see what happens with this corner. Okay, 18-6 minute, very nearly scored then. I was about to say, I just saw that Erdingen scored a goal. And oh, actually saying that, Victoria Cohn have equalised once again. So it's two all in that game. We're going to make another change just to waste a little bit of time. I'm going to sub off Kobold for Gottwald just to kind of give Kobold a few minutes rest here. We'll get Gottwald onto the pitch in his place and hopefully see our game out as 3-0. Let me scroll down. Where's the Erdingen game? I can't even see it on this list here. I couldn't even see it. I've got no idea what the score is. I think it's still 2-all. I haven't seen anything else pop up down here in the bottom left. I say, that clearance on Ritter was really, really bad. That was awful. Come on, guys. If we win this, Erdingen drop points, that would be a perfect start to this promotion race. Of course, we, uh, Dresden, if we slip up, could well pip us to first place. But realistically, Dresden isn't one that we're really that fussed on. The one we're fussed about is Erdingen, because obviously they are in that playoff spot. First or second place, it doesn't really matter. You get a trophy or you don't, and in day though, you still get promoted. And that is what is the main thing, is promotion this season. If we can avoid the playoffs, the relegation playoff, I think that would be a lot better because it's never easy having to play a team from the league above to try and get yourself promoted because it's a two-legged affair as well. It's not nice. Erdingen, Erdingen are losing. Cohn scored a third goal and I don't think they scored again. So we could already be seven points clear if that indeed is what's happened. Right, come on. I'm going to say good win, boys. Well done. All the boys look absolutely over the moon about that, which is really, really good stuff. And did it finish as a 3-2 defeat? It actually did. I cannot believe that because Cole are down in 14th place and Erdingen 
ended up losing, which means we are now seven clear. And should we beat Erdogan in our next game, we will be confirmed as already being promoted. In fact, actually, if we draw, I think it confirms it as well. Yes, it does. It does, because of course, after this, there's only two games left. Wow. Okay. That's, uh, that makes the next game even more important. I didn't think we'd have a chance of promotion in this episode, but apparently we do. We've already secured a playoff spot as well, which is fantastic stuff. And of course, Erdingen is up next at home. So I will see you for that very much vital promotion contention match in a few seconds. Here we are then now for our second game of the episode. And what is, let's be honest, possibly one of the most important games of our series so far. We face Erdogan at home, the side who are in third place, knowing if we avoid defeat, we are already promoted with two games to spare. In terms of the lineup we're going for, it's practically the same side that just played against 1860, but there's a few little injuries we're having to accommodate for at the moment. It's going to be Krapikas still in net, then Kraus, and and Kobold, the same back three that have played basically since January. They've been fantastic since that point. Francis is coming in at right back. Unfortunately, Moray, the loney from Borussia Dortmund, is injured. He's going to miss this game. He may even miss the next game as well. It's then Hertzsch still at left back. It's then Shifshi and Tim Rieder in midfield. I've dropped Schmid back for Rieder because he's now back from his suspension. But Johnny Williams, our attacking midfielder, has picked up an injury and could well miss the remainder of the season should we not go to a playoff. So as a result, I've put Enzo Zidane into attacking midfield. I've been brought Shifshi in as the new deep line playmaker. It's in, of course, Ritter and Pori up front because, of course, he easily scored in the last game and Ritter is absolutely on fire. Other than that, though, the team is basically as strong as it can be just without Johnny Williams and without Moray in the team. I'm still pretty confident that we can at least get a draw in this game. I'm going to get the team submitted anyway. Let's get into it. I'm really excited and really nervy both at exactly the same time because we know avoiding defeat is massive. If we can guarantee the promotion already in this first season, that'll be absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go and point the finger at the lads. I'm going to say we are just one point away from promotion to the second Bundesliga Go out there and impress me it is indeed the case. I had the option to do the old team meeting. I, of course, refuse to do it because every time I do a team meeting in Foot Manager, it never works. So I never, ever do them if I can ever avoid it, excluding at the very beginning and at the end of the season. But yeah, so I just was like, nope, I am not doing that whatsoever. Just completely ignored it. All the lads probably congregated in the little meeting area going, oh, we're ready for it, boss. And then I just never showed up, basically. We've got an early highlight here, though. Hertzsch, he plays it across to Francis. Come on, Francis. We are the favourites for this game, by the way, despite it being first v third. Pori. Oh, Pori, that was a proper chance. That really was. Of course, we don't actually have to score. If it finishes nil-nil, it's good enough for us. It really is. Dresden, by the way, are playing Colne, who have literally just beaten Erdingen. And I think we then face Colne in our next game as well. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure we do still have to face them before the end of the season. If Colne can go and beat Dresden, that'll be pretty cool. Actually, as I said that, they've gone and scored a goal. It's 1-0 to Colne at the moment. But at the moment, of course, we are still level with Erdingen. I mean, in the day, as I said in the previous match, I don't really care if we win the league or not. The one thing I care for is getting promoted. But it is possibly a chance here for Erdogan. Fantastic ball and Krapikas with one hell of a save there with his leg. He looks so calm. He looks so calm. The ball's been put in. Okay. It's a, he was one on one. And then the goalkeeper's like, oh yeah, I'll just stick the leg out. Don't you worry about that, boss. I've got you covered. And it's like, thank you very much, Krapikas. The man who is currently the leading player for clean sheets in the league. I think he's on 20 or 21 already for the season he's having one hell of a year if we can get him back again next year it'd be fantastic but i have a feeling we won't be able to get him on loan unfortunately hang on rich has played through been blocked once again been a bit of a cagey game so far we've had two shots which have both been blocked of course erling and Ali had the better of any of the chance kraus there should have done better at that near post he should have done better with that chance he really really should have done and at the moment dresden are still losing currently to Cole. It just seems that Cole, despite being a relegation candidate, are fancying going and beating all of the big boys in all their games at the moment. I can't believe they beat Erding in that last game. Erding were at home and they somehow lost to a side struggling down the bottom of the league. Francis has lumped that up. It's a mistake. Pori, he should be through one and one and what a save by the Erding and keeper. I think his name was Jurgis or something. What a save. The keeper had to get a touch to it and ping it onto the bar. Honestly, that deserved a goal. We can't kind of say of dominating the game. I'll show you the stats when it flicks up here. 
We have been totally dominant, and yet the game is currently sitting level. And other than that chance from Pori, the best chance really in the game was Erdingen's one that Krapikas did save for us. So despite us being the dominant side, it's probably quite lucky that we are losing at this stage of the match. I'm going to say to the boys, we've been the better team here. Just keep doing what you're doing and we'll be fine. Some of the lads cared, some of them didn't. I'll say to the defenders, you have the ability and they all look okay. I'm just going to say to the poor e, I'm not happy with him. He seems motivated with that as well. So I say a pretty decent team talk. Okay, Dresden have equalised in their game, by the way. It's one all now at Dresden. There's a highlight here for Erdingen. Osawe, the former Kaiserslautern player, He's just laid it off to Gerbel there. Merschel to, Mush um, I think to Moschul, Moschul, I've no idea. Those two players' names look very, very similar there. It's one syllable different. And okay, I think we're okay. I think we managed to get away with it. It's been a very, very nervy game. But as I said already, this is good enough for us. I will take a nil-nil. I do not care. Coble plays it back there to Crappy Cast. Come on. Let's go and get a goal. Make things a little bit easier on ourselves. Shift she here, the second choice DLP after he's having to come in and replace the injured Johnny Williams. Great ball there from Enzo. Up to Pori to make it 1-0. It bloody is 1-0. Come on, Marvin Pori. He had such a difficult start to the season. But the later half of this season, he has been fantastic. He really has. Since the January where everyone has just kind of clicked. I think the tactic has really just bedded itself into the players. But Pori, oh, what a goal that could prove to be. 1-0 up, 30 minutes to play. Erdogan need two goals in order to keep themselves in the promotion race and not to guarantee us to be guaranteed a promotion spot. If they do not score inside the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be getting very, very excited, that is for sure. Ritter here to Cable. Another chance here. Isn't it another goal for us or a chance for Erdingen? That's a mistake there from Reader. Great tackle. They're going to get the ball back. But sadly, we haven't actually got the ball off of Erdingen currently. Unfortunately, it looks like it's actually going to be a chance for Erdingen. Gerbel here. He plays it across to push to Grimaldi. Thankfully for us, Grimaldi doesn't put that in. Grimaldi, by the way, the Erdingen, I think he's a striker for them. He's got a lot of goals for them this season. He's had a very, very good season. And Dresden, by the way, guys, are now beating Cole 2-1 at home. Unsurprisingly, really. I'm going to make some changes, though, to the team. I'm going to sub off Shift Sheet for Schmieder back, I reckon. And we're also going to sub off Hurtchett for Hlusek. I'm going to tell Hlusek to go more defensive. And I'm going to stop the overlap on that side. We're going to start doing a little bit of time-wasting. And we're going to play a little bit more disciplined as well. We're just going to start trying to see the game out just a little bit because we know that as long as we don't concede two goals, we are guaranteed to be promoted. So let's just go out there. We'll try and be sensible. We'll try and be calm. I'm even going to lower down the tempo now as well. We just don't want to be stupid in this game. Right, come on. I'm going to make another change now just to waste a little bit of time. I'm going to sub off Sickinger. We're going to bring on Gottvalt in his place. I'll swap Gottvalt and Cobalt over like so. And then hopefully... Guys, we can see this out. They need to score two. We're into stoppage time. I think we're going to do it. I think we are. I think we're going to have promotion in our hands. We have done it. The first season, and we've already been promoted. We've two games to spare. Come on, boys. Fantastic stuff. Well done, lads. Your performance has secured us promotion to the second Bundesliga. I wasn't sure we'd be able to do it in our first season. I'll be totally honest. I thought we'll be in and around the top kind of six positions. I thought we might scrape a playoff spot. But honestly, since the January and the players that we've brought in, we have been absolutely fantastic. We really have. I think Dresden secured themselves a promotion spot as well. And indeed they have. So we have already been promoted. Of course, we still need to decide who's going to be winning the title. So of course, we'll be coming back for that in next episode. But absolutely fantastic stuff. We've been given our initial budgets. What are the board going to be giving us? About 130 grand to spend on wages and about £1.2 million on transfers. So that right there is very, very exciting because that gives us about 40 grand a week to play with and, of course, another million quid in transfers, which could be really, really good fun. But honestly, guys, I am so, so pleased with the fact we've already guaranteed ourselves promotion. And the fact we've got a three-point lead over Dresden and an eight-goal advantage means as long as we win only one of our two last games... We should be confirmed as champions as well, unless we have a get absolutely spanked in one of them. In terms of the schedule, what we come back for next time, of course, it's going to be our final two league matches of the season. We have to face Colne, the side that beat Erdingen, and arguably handed us promotion. And also, bottom of the league, Verl, in really what should be two easy games. And if you now said that, we'll probably go and lose both of them. But we'll come back for them next time around and see if we can get ourselves the third division title as well as promotion. But that will be coming in Monday's episode. 
Overall though guys, that just about wraps up this episode here today and I am absolutely over the bloody moon about the fact we've been promoted. I did not think going into this episode that we could even actually get promotion, yet somehow we have done. Erdingen have just completely fallen away in the latter bit of this season. They really, really have done and I couldn't be happier about that fact. I really, really hope, guys, that you've enjoyed this episode here today. Seeing a secure promotion already, it's fantastic. If you did enjoy it, guys, please do chuck a like down onto the video. As I always say, it massively does help the channel out. And of course, looking forward to seeing any more of my content, such as my FM21 experiments, much like the 500 years later one that I mentioned earlier on in the video, or any of my FM21 tactics. And do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. But guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.